I want to begin this review with a very important question, which I hope we can answer by the end of it, which is basically just this. What is it about Horizon that's just so special? These games are incredible masterpieces, but is it the fact that they're such fun open worlds? Is it the great combat? Is it the fact that we're fighting against huge robotic dinosaurs or the writing that conveys the emotions of the main character Aloy so expertly? I think it's all of that, but I also think that there is a very special magic inside of these games that very much defies explanation. But today, I'm going to be talking a lot about Horizon Forbidden West, because I cannot stop playing it. What's up, gamers? Dreamcast Guy here. Now, please, if you could, this is a brutally honest review. If you would do me a favor, like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. This is going to be a thing where if we get 3,000 likes, I'm going to give away a copy of Horizon Forbidden West. Now, we're going to divide things into three separate categories. Gameplay analysis, graphics analysis, and then we're going to be talking about the story in a completely spoiler-free sense. But let's start things off by talking about the action. The biggest thing that's always made Horizon in such a unique style of fun, in my opinion, is the fact that the moment-to-moment -moment interactions, whether they are with characters or climbing, they really manage to work. But now they've made some very, very big improvements to the gameplay that make Forbidden West a way better video game. Like Horizon Zero Dawn certainly had some times where it was fun. This is a completely different league. Now let's begin by talking about the parkour. This is a game that really specializes in having lots of different objectives at any time. You could be climbing around, you're trying to use the new toolkit. Now there's two new things you could do in this game. There's a lot of times where you're just trying to scale a wall or you're in an underground dungeon and you're trying to figure out how perfectly to use a bunch of grips to to get to the far side of an environment. But the two new tools we have now are the grapple hook and a, what is basically like a laser glider. These are incredibly fun. They are incredibly cool. But let me talk about how they work. So the grapple hook, you sort of aim like you're going to be firing your bow and you press R2 and it lets you basically get out your grapple hook. Now, this actually has multiple functions. If you're in the middle of a jump, you can pull yourself towards a ledge. If there's something that has a grate on it, a lot of times you can open up vents. You can pull down boxes. You can pull items to yourself. It makes it where you have this extra ability to interact with bigger climbing puzzles. And additionally, the new hang glider is basically a laser shield that lets you hover to the ground. Now, both of these seem very tiny at first. When they were originally introduced, you're kind of just going, all right, that seems neat, but how's it actually going to work out? This makes parkour a trillion times better, but also a lot harder at the same time. The biggest thing I like about this is that a lot of Forbidden West feels like it's throwing you in the deep end and you're evolving gills to adapt. It's always kind of trying to figure out how do I survive these impossible situations, but these new parkour puzzles are much more intricate. A lot of times you have to constantly use all your different skills of wall jumping, flying off an environment, grapple hooking onto a ledge, and all of it in a freaking millisecond. But what I mean by this is that I like that this game, it pushes you, it challenges you, but it feels so fun because of it. Now let's talk a little bit more about the action when it comes to just shooting and looting. Aloy's main specialty is the fact that she's crazy good with a bow. In this environment, the things you're fighting against obviously are big mechanical beasties. Things like that are going to be burrowing underground, popping up, trying to sneak attack you. And a lot of times, if you get spotted, some of these things will snap you in half like a freaking paperclip. But I like the fact that now it feels like the aiming has been refined. A lot of times while you're playing this game, sneaking around in the grass, trying to line up a good headshot, or even just scanning an enemy to find its particular weak point, like a big explosive barrel that he some reason duct taped to his back. Horizon Forbidden West, it feels like it's even more focused on the fact that if you're good at this game, it feels good. I like the fact that this game really lets you sort of explore the idea of success. 
But here's what brings me to the biggest new addition to Forbidden West, which is there are now six separate skill trees. These fundamentally change the nature of your particular playthrough to let you do things so you can have special melee combos. So when you get up in somebody's face, you can hit them multiple times in quick succession or do special super strikes. If you do something like the medicine route, you can actually make it so the potions you craft are more efficient, take less materials, and are a lot, lot stronger. So it makes it where you can take a heftier hit and only need one mushroom to get back to full health. There's also things like making it so you can go down the stealth route so you're practically invisible. Or my personal favorite, I went heavy into bows. I made it where whenever I'm aiming, time slows down drastically. I can also zoom in and just target specific weak points very, very efficiently. But also, the deeper you go into these new skill trees, you unlock super abilities that are called Valor. Now, these new skills are very fascinating because they really get you a chance to sort of tinker with the bigger fights. It gives you an extra resource to defend yourself if a situation suddenly goes very badly, if you're getting surrounded, if there's a bunch of monsters try to eat your friends. You can do stuff like some of my abilities let me call down one big arrow from the sky to do essentially a behind the back attack. I could also do things where I'm firing multiple arrows at once, but specifically as I built up energy, I could do my Valor super move. Now, each of the trees has this, but the one for bows made it where I would do 30% bonus bow damage for 30 seconds. Now, since I spent a lot of time doing side quests, upgrading my character, and making sure my equipment was max rank, I could absolutely blow people up. Even bosses are getting cut in half with a bandsaw the second I upgraded my Valor strike. And I like that. It feels really good when you're losing a fight, you manage to fill up your special meter, and suddenly you're just mowing these people down like skeet shooting. It is incredibly epic. There is an intensity to a lot of this that absolutely works. But this does also bring me to a part of the game that I feel like is vastly underappreciated, which is the fact that this is an open world game that is never boring. The entire map is filled with objectives, whether they are side quests where you're trying to rescue people, times where you just need to climb into ancient ruins to discover hidden extra collectibles, or side paths that can unlock extra parts of the map permanently, like when you climb up the tall necks. And honestly, what's really great is that each of these side activities actually plays different. It's cool the fact that everything manages to unfold in a different style. You don't get bored because if you get tired of doing the main quest, do a couple side objectives. Oh, you want to make more friends in town and make stuff cheaper at the vendors? Maybe help them out. Maybe save some civilians. Maybe just try and make sure that the world is a little bit better. Now, there is some extra special stuff like when it comes to the dialogue, something that's very interesting here is that everything in this game looks a lot better. Let's talk a bit about graphics. So... There is a lot of talking in this game. There is a lot of cutscenes. There's a lot of times where you're sort of just sitting there eating your popcorn and having some very gorgeous vistas dumped into your freaking eyeballs. Everything in this game looks top notch. This is a cutting edge experience. Whether you're playing this on a PlayStation 4 Pro or a PlayStation 5, I have tested both. It looks superb. We're talking crystal clear visuals, amazing facial animation. When people are scared or worried or nervous or excited, you feel that emotion. Now, part of this is also because the PlayStation 5 now is working with 3D audio, getting a chance to actually hear an enemy off in the distance rumbling as it comes up close. Feeling the intensity of somebody's fear as they're getting flanked definitely comes through a lot better when coupled with this amazing sense of graphical detail. But along with that, the biggest fear I had for this game, and you're going to laugh at me for it, I was afraid they would not be able to capture that sense of awe. The original Horizon Zero Dawn, there was almost this sense of shock at a lot of times. You would just see something that seemed so impossible, some sort of creature that was so daunting, something that was so dangerous that a lot of times you just felt like your breath got caught in your chest. For Ben West matches that intensity. It manages to be fun. It manages to be scary. It manages to still make it feel like, oh my gosh, how am I possibly going to finish this quest up until the second that you actually finish the quest? Now, let me talk about one of the most interesting new things they've decided to add environmental wise. 
The entire color palette of this game looks great. It's got a very vaporwave aesthetic. Everything is these really blown out, oversaturated reds and greens and glorious blues glowing on the veins of these dinosaurs. But one of the things that's new here is a lot of underwater exploration. Of course, there's things like special healing items you'll find at the bottom of a pond or something like that. But additionally, there are times where swimming is not necessarily forced. It's accidental. Like there's times where you're in side of a dungeon and you're just doing a big jumping puzzle and when you fall off the platform you see these huge underwater beautiful areas times where there's just like glowing electronics from dead society sort of just sitting there flickering in the darkness the underwater scenes really managed to show off the graphical detail that they're trying to go for here it, it feels more than just realistic, it feels like real life in a way, and it's so effective at how they try and convey that. But I do want to talk about the story a bit. Now, I'm going to try and do this in a very, very spoiler-free fashion. I just want to talk very loosely about this, because here is the one part of the game I actually did not love. The original Horizon Zero Dawn, when I reviewed it, I gave it a 10 out of 10. I thought the story was fantastic, the writing was airtight, but part of the fact that what made that such an effective tale in a lot of aspects was the fact that as you're exploring in the Horizon world, it always has this sense of raw discovery. As you're seeing these blown out ruins or these huge chaotic monsters that are coming up out of the earth, it feels like you are the first person ever to witness it. Horizon Forbidden West, it doesn't quite match that vibe. There's something about this that feels much more played out in certain sections. One of the biggest problems I have is that I still think the story is good. I still think the characters and the voice acting are incredibly great. I think a lot of the tribes we encounter and make peace with are really, really well done. My problem is that it almost feels preachy in a way. There's a lot of times where the conversation just feels like 20 minutes of explaining there's this faction and this lore and, oh man, we have to worry about this ancient betrayal of hackers from 2100 and stuff like that, they try so hard to establish the importance of the universe that at times it sort of loses its impact. It feels like I'm sitting in a classroom again and my bored teacher, Mr. Bryant, is trying to tell me, all right, Mr. Shockley, here's why you got to keep dreaming. I feel like the best times of a video game story is when you care, when you can seek out the plot. But here, they just shovel the story into your ears. Now, the reason I'm sort of conflicted is that I still think the story itself is good. I still think the main beats, the actual plot twists, a lot of this stuff is incredibly great. I just wish that they spaced out the big reveals. Sometimes it just feels like it's just plot, 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 plot. And after a bit, I kind of wanted a second to catch my breath, to digest. I mean, it feels like every single time you're doing anything main quest related at all, you're going to get another five chapters of lore. Space it out, take your time, let this digest, let this actually function in my brain before you give me another 18 character names all battling it out for dominance. This is still an incredibly good game. If you are actually curious at all if this can match the glory of Horizon Zero Dawn, I'll say Forbidden West is better in almost every single way. If you're looking for something that's fun, something that's going to make you want to find every single spot of every single corner of the map, this is is definitely the game for you. If you have a PlayStation 5, also, I feel like this is just a great tech demo to run around in. It is a good time from corner to corner, but maybe space out the time between main quests and you'll enjoy it a lot more. But okay, so we've heard a lot of good and a little bit of bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Horizon Forbidden West a 9 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching this review, gamers. You guys are the absolute best. I love you very much. If you could, give this video a like. As I mentioned, if this hits 3,000 likes, I'm going to give away a copy of Horizon Forbidden West over on my Twitter account. So hopefully we hit that in the first day. That'd be super awesome. But you guys rock. Have a great time. And please keep dreaming. Man, this game's good. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.